So I would like to thank AOS for giving us this uh, session. And uh, some of you attended the morning course. It, this could be a repetition for them. So, but anyway, like uh, Subhadra ma'am has made my talk very simple. I, I need, just need to show the case examples. I need, to, I need not go through the basics. She has already covered it. So this is the ERG, which is the mass response of the entire retina. It's where biochemical and ionic changes happens in the photoreceptor and RP, which generates electrical potential, which is recorded as an ERG. So let's go to the case scenarios. So I am going to describe some of the cases where there is uncertainty about what is happening, what is intended and what is required. So let me start with the night vision problems. So this was a 25 year old male who presented with night vision problem. So fundus and clinical examination was absolutely normal and OCT was also normal. He was consulting multiple people. Obviously when you see this kind of things, young patients, we always think that maybe the patient is malingering. So that is what was suspected and it was referred to me. So I, when we don't understand anything, we go for electrophysiological test. That's what I did in this case. So this is the fulfilled ERG. So as you know, the, whatever that is in the blue is normals. The black the line, the waveform prep, uh, belongs to the patient. So if you look at the dark corrupted uh, 0 0.01 ERG, as Subhadra Mem was telling, it is supposed to be like this. this is searching for me. Yes, here it is. It is almost flat. There is no there is no detectable rod driven responses. So even the cone light adapter response, if you see, there are amplitude is reduced and also there is a slight delay in the latency. So now we know that the fundus dosity, though they are appearing normal, there is something wrong in the retina. So we need to understand. So 26 year old male, night vision problem where everything is normal. The first thing which you should suspect is possibly a vitamin A deficiency. I thought I'll order vitamin A as expected. It came very low. So and our job doesn't stop at that point because 20, why should a 26 year old male should have a vitamin A deficiency? So we need to find out the cause for that. So on general physical examination, the patient appeared malnourished. So this is something very important. Maybe ophthalmologist, we should not forget we are also a physician. When, whenever we see a patient, we should uh, give a comprehensive holistic approach. We should never miss out this uh, appearance, the general physical examination when the patient walks in. So we need not do all those uh, Pallar, Icterus, cyanosis, just appearance why sometimes they can do, especially the syndromic ones. So like this, this patient who appeared malnourished, then I asked a few leading questions, then he told he has dyspepsia, frequent loose tools and all. So he underwent extensive workup to identify the cause for malabsorption. So finally he had to go, undergo an intestinal biopsy which uh, showed that he had an intestinal lacrosokinosis, which was the cause for vitamin A malabsorption. So the ERG was repeated one week, one month and two months after receiving vitamin A supplementation. So this is the ERG at the baseline as you can see. Just, just one week after supply, uh, giving vitamin A, the wave is almost becoming normal. At the end of two months, ERG is normal. So that's where the ERG is very important because these cases, if not for electrophysiological test, we end up missing these cases. And sometimes as in this patient, um, disease could be life threatening also, if not diagnosed early by us, it could be fatal. <coughs> so now let's look at uh, something where the retina is looking abnormal, but the patient is asymptomatic. He is telling I am normal. So this is one such case, 28 year old male, he came for routine checkup, vision is 66 and 6. So, but the fundus had multiple these flex like changes throughout, except sparing the macula. OCT was again absolutely normal. So we did the fulfilled ERG, again the fulfilled ERG was normal. So this is a case of benign flat retina, we need not do anything, this is a non-progressive disorder, just the patient has to be told you have something like this, he has to come for regular purpose, these patients usually do well. So one more patient, 36 year old, again vision is 6, 6 and 6, this patient also had uh, multiple flex like and we can call it as vitally form like deposit throughout the fundus, but this patient had night vision problem, earlier patient did not have any symptoms. So OCT was again normal, uh, I did the ERG, just look at the ERG, again dark out to 0.01 ERG is undetectable and if you look at the combined responses, there is something interesting, the A wave is forming, the B wave is not even reaching the baseline, it's getting terminated here itself. So this is the classical electronegative ERG. So as madam told, the B wave has to come from the inner retina, What whenever there is a problem in inner retina, you get electronegative ERG, it could be anything. Even in patients of CRDO, where outer retina is intact, if you get an ERG, you can get electronegative responses. So now we have so many OCT signs to identify the CRDO. In case of this confusion, you can 
can do. And the same thing with ischemic type of CRV was. The, in PGS we used to read you know, the difference between ischemic, non-ischemic, reverse B by A ratio. This is what they meant. So basically this patient had fundus albipunctatus, which is a form of congenital stationary nerve blindness. So just look at the two examples which I showed. First patient has more, you know, like uh, the fundus, the moment you look, the extensive flex, the other patient has very minimal flexor like deposits, but ERG is telling something totally different story. So all of us who practice ERG we believe in one thing, which my mentor Professor Gamal keeps telling. So whatever that appears structurally normal doesn't mean the function is behaving the same way. This is what we should remember. So all of us who practice retina and all, whatever that appears structurally, whatever the way it may appear, so that won't reflect its functional integrity. If you want to understand that, you have to go for an electrophysiological test. So then uh, this was an, uh, one more example where the no retina is looking normal but with an unexplained visual symptoms. So this was 26 year old female recently married brought by husband because she was quite inattentive to surroundings and there was no positive family history and vision she was giving a variable response. So basically she was telling I don't have any problem my in-laws are simply suspecting that I have some problem and all that so she was like I'm, I'm normal, I'm, I don't want even she was not at all willing to get the vision tested also. Somehow we convinced her and got the OCT scans done. So OCT scan, I'll show all the cross section, it was normal. There's no defect in any of the layers if you can uh, see the uh, screen. And auto fluorescence was also normal. So obviously recently married, not happy. So something, the first thing we suspect is maybe malingering. Maybe she's not happy with something. That's why she's not paying attention to things. That's why husband is telling she's inattentive but uh, before uh, calling any patient as malingering we have to subject them for electrophysiological test so same thing we did if you see here this ERG the dark adapted responses are completely normal just look at the light adapted responses it is undetectable so though the retina is looking normal the cones in our entire retina are dysfunctional so this is a case of achromatopsia which is a form of stationary cone dystrophy and also they will have severe color vision problem. They will not be able to identify one demo plate also when you check the Shiara color plates. So one interesting thing was this is the kind of cavitations usually what we get in uh, achromatopsia, the bifid cavitation or a single cavitation. But our surprise, this patient did not have even that also. This is common in achromatopsia. This is not something new. The patients can have even absolutely normal OCT. I think that Simmer has a series on uh, achromatopsia. He would agree on this. Then one more scenario is where we end up uh, seeing patients who have taken multiple consultation but they don't know what's happening. They will go to from one consultant to other thing and they come up and ask us what's wrong with my eyes. This was one such case who is a 25 year old male presented with night vision problem, no positive family history. Vision was around 6968, color vision was normal, anterior segment was normal. He was born out of a consanguineous marriage and had one more uh, sibling, male sibling who was normal. So this was his uh, fundus photograph. So the moment I saw, I was excited, okay, this is Mizu phenomena, night vision problem, okay, I'm dealing with a CSNB group of disorders. So I was pretty sure of my diagnosis. So then I was thinking, why is this patient is going from here and there, post to post? I did an autofluorescence, which was unremarkable, except for a minor changes here and there, both the periphery and the posterior pole. I did the OCT. To my surprise, OCT showed some kind of ascetic changes in the perifoveal region which we usually don't see in CSM. I thought, okay, this is a phenomenon, night vision. But then I was, oh, okay, this is juvenile ret retinoscisis. I was sure, okay, I'm dealing with juvenile retinoscisis. Maybe the mesophenon sometimes the reflex can be seen like that. I was now very sure. So I just wanted to confirm it by doing ERG. Uh, so I ordered for ERG. I was, in fact, I remember that day that my technician brought the report. I thought I'll just sign, I will see the electronegative waveform, I'll sign and sign. So to my surprise, this is the ERG which I got. The electronegative waveform which I was looking at, it didn't come. So then I was again perplexed, so what, what are we dealing with? It was not CSN, which is not general retinal crisis. So this is where sometimes you may have to go non ISCV standard ERGs. So that's what we did. We checked for uh, long and medium wavelength cone by stimulating with the uh, RN light in a blue background. It was unrecordable. So when we stimulated for short wavelength, that is with orange background and the blue light, the response was enhanced as uh, Subhadra ma'am showed in her uh, this thing. So this is a case of enhanced response syndrome. Fine. To conclude, I would like to say electrophysiology is an important tool to aid the diagnosis, but it should also
always be followed by clinical correlation. So that is very important. Just like any other investigative modality, don't take anything in isolation. It has to be combined with other imaging modalities and the clinical and the history. So then only you can come to a conclusion. In difficult, so in some cases, that you have, if you have a genetic testing report, that also helps. So thank you so much.